Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Intercede. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. 
all from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who will obey him. The word of the Lord. Serves me must follow me, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the, man, the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life, life will lose it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. What should I say? Father, save me this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then in heaven, a voice came. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd heard this and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. What's the power of Christianity? The biggest irony in human life is that the power of Christianity is discovered only when the Christian chooses to give up power over his or her own life. It is the teaching of our culture that success is found in acquisition. We must acquire an education, then we must acquire a job, and then we must acquire a better job, and then we must acquire a house, a car, a large screen television, complete with a home theater system, and if possible, even maybe a boat. And once this is completed, we need a better job to acquire a, a better house, a bigger car, and perhaps a bigger boat. And with these things, both we and everyone else can gauge our success. Mother Teresa, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, is admired by virtually the entire world, but nobody wants to be her. She lived her life acquiring nothing. In fact, she lived her life giving things away. She gave up creature comfort. She gave up a job and money. She gave up power. She gave up a personal life to give just a little bit of comfort to the dying in India's streets. Go 
good for her, we say. Better her than me. I could never do that. Certainly the scandals of sexual abuse has damaged the priesthood, but vocations were lacking even before the scandals broke, long before. One mother summed up the thought of her son being a priest quite clearly. She said, I love and admire priests, she told her pastor, but I could never encourage my son to be a priest. He would have to give up entirely too much, and I want him to have things his father and I never had. I told my parents long time ago that I got things that they could never give me, being a priest. And I delighted in that, and so did they. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And it's just not flour. It's cookies and cakes and pies and bread and all sorts of other good things. If you think about that for just a moment in a very practical way. We heard from Jeremiah the prophet in the first reading. He received his prophetic call about 627 BCE. It was a good time to be a prophet. Josiah was king of Israel, of Judah rather, and he had begun, begun a religious reform trying to return the Jews to their faith in the God who had brought them out of Egypt, who had given them an identity and the land. And unfortunately, Josiah died in battle against the Egyptians and the succeeding kings of Judah made one compromise after another in dealing with Egypt and then Babylon to try to hang on to power. And in so doing, the compromises usually consisted of lessening their faith in their God, who brought them out, who gave them an identity, and taking on the worship of gods of their more powerful neighbors. Finally, devoid of any faithfulness, Judah falls to Babylon, and the great exile begins. And it was Jeremiah's fate to warn Judah of its impending doom. Jer Jeremiah was seen as a traitor with all of his talk of surrendering the nation for the sake of keeping faith in God. And doing so several times almost cost him his life. Jeremiah goes and complains to God about his fate, and he even thought about getting out of the prophet business in order to end his personal suffering. But in the end, Jeremiah chose to surrender his comfort for the sake of staying faithful to God. He chose to live what he preached. And despite his suffering, his conquest and exile, Jeremiah discovered the power of God. In staying faithful despite every reason not to, Jeremiah found his own peace and conviction to say that God would forgive his people. We hear it in that first reading. There would be a new covenant, one written on the heart, not on stone tablets. And this new covenant would be with people like Jeremiah, those who chose to love God despite the consequences. Unless a grain of wheat 
falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. John's Gospel tells us something that should not be acceptable by any standard of success. Jesus would give God glory, but not through any measure of, of human success. Jesus would not become any kind of earthly king. He would never possess any kind of earthly power. He would never enjoy great creature comforts. Yet, he would give God glory by dying the death of a traitor to Rome through his crucifixion. He would be crucified and his followers were rendered frightened outcasts. To understand the irony, we must understand how all concerned would see in Jesus a failure. The cross for an unbeliever is not a matter of success. It's total loss. Jesus did win, however. And it was in the very act of staying faithful even though it meant suffering death, that Jesus gave glory to God. Nothing was more important to Jesus than his Father. Not even his own life. Most of us admire Jesus, but like Mother Teresa, and not many of us want to be like him. We would rather keep our lives, our comforts, and our successes than surrender too much for the sake of loving God. Our challenge on this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, is to learn how to surrender, to let go, as scary as that is. Through our Lenten practices, Prayer, prayer, praying, fasting, and almsgiving. We must find a way to make fulfilling God's law more important than anything else in our lives, be it our job, our comfort, and even possibly some of the people we love. This is what it means to have God's law written on our hearts instead of some stone tablets. It's part of us. It comes from within us. Loving God is a way we live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not a rule we follow. One more time. Loving God is a way we live, not a rule we follow. Jesus said to us today, unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. I believe 
in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer up prayers and supplications to God through Jesus, who has become the source of our eternal salvation. For the Church, that all members may profit richly from the graces that God offers them in their Lenten journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that the faithful obedience of believers may attract non-believers to Christ, the source of eternal salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of repentance, that God will move our hearts to celebrate the sacrament of penance and to open us to the power of forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the One Heart Capital Campaign, that Christ would bless our work of beautifying and updating our parish buildings, making a welcome home for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Marianne Fake, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully departed, especially Mary Butel, that through the prayers of the apostles Philip and Andrew, they may see Jesus face to face, and for the poor souls in purgatory, and for those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us the joy of your salvation, Lord. Sustain a willing spirit within us. Hear our humble prayer and lead us one day to life eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in our hearts the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Forty days and forty nights, you were fasting.